in Milan for this company, I call group, I will present it. And we even had uh, an office in Ukraine, but had to close it temporarily for some organization, uh, reorganization. Hopefully now we can re even reopen it. So this is another my interest to, to be presented to you and all the experience and the challenges that our company has. Hopefully somebody will decide to, to join and maybe we can open an office again in Ukraine, knowing that there are so many great uh, intelligent people here around and also uh, the, the universities and so on. Okay. So anyway, that the topic, uh, the clear topic was visual quality inspection systems with guns and synthetic data. I will talk a bit more about everything. Okay, <laughs> as if this is more a business presentation, not very technological. No, I'm I'm myself not a developer. I'm a head of R and D, so I run R and D departments, which has a lot of uh, R and D projects around AI. You now, so we've solved cool uh, challenges and know some tricks. Uh, but let me say it's mostly on the level of architecture, on approach, how to use AI for specific uh, concrete technical, technical challenges. While quality inspection systems is one of the most interesting challenge I ever, I was ever always sure, uh, even since my, uh, my, my student uh, study, now quality inspection with AI, without the need of humans to evaluate the quality of a product, it's something unbelievable. And now I will show you what is the state of the art and how it is solved, not technically what, what are the approaches. Okay, let's go ahead. As I said, my small, my small, but <laughs> let me say important from Rich is, is an experience uh, startup company in Milan. It's a technological company that developed a lot of technology around 3D, 3D and AI. Making 3D and AI working together, it doesn't matter. Well, that, that, the details, I just quickly show it now so you, you, you understand the background. No, so it's uh, integration with CAD systems, it's uh, uh, visual, uh, visualization, rendering, it's advanced scenarios for retail, but then the main sense is this AI driven design. So we work with several important brands and uh, uh, designers to help them uh, passing to a new technological, uh, more technological approach to design new collections uh, by incorporating data and algorithms not only uh, generative design, but real algorithms uh, made, made, made internally. And then of course, everything goes to smart manufacturing and robotics. This will be a very important part of my talk today as uh, another partner I call group is exactly in this area. Okay, so this is an introduction. Uh, and basically the, serve, uh, the areas where my startup company for several, several years is applying AI are those. One, one we call 3D visual search, very quickly will show, so at least you understand the application. My size, so it's everything about size, fitting, body, uh, feet, uh, feet, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then, okay, okay, we developed together with the iCall group uh, quality inspection systems. And then we, by, let's say, let's say by, by um, generalizing uh, our experience from several projects, we created this new framework. We called it 3D to ML. I will basically talk about it. What is it? How 3D helps machine learning being much more effective. And this is something to let you understand what, what in fashion, in design, what companies mean by AI and data-driven design. Now, the idea is to have some, <laughs> for them at least in fashion, to have some very intelligent AI somewhere in between. <laughs> we call it to simplify mother shoe gun network. It is network able to generate basically any design of shoes and accessories that it's been trained on. I will show you how. And it works like conditional, conditional gun basically, but well, many level, many layers uh, with a quite an important uh, complicated architecture. It can receive as an input some style, we call it style. It could be drawing, just drawing, or a real photo of one company, another company, anything, pass through this network and generate real products ready for ready for uh, design enhancement. Now, so it can be taken by designers and already pro 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 proceeded with that. So it's, it's only to show you the scenario, one of the very interesting scenarios that we deal with, but it's not a goal of our today deep no, on quality inspection. Anyway, it is the background for it. Then now finally, I call group. I call group as you see from the map, here recent, until recently, as I said, before we had uh, a Ukrainian office, I really hope to, re to have chance to reopen it. We uh, start from Belarus, 
uh, where most of our research lab, more than 200 engineers now stay there. So I call group is quite a big company, at least as a, as a number of people. They're all researchers, all engineers, many from applied mathematics. Now then we, ha we, we, is we are a formerly European, co European company in Milan, there is my R&D lab around AI. And in Barcelona, we have the headquarters to commercialize all our development. And the most important, our um, case, let's say first in uh, surely in the sea space, no Russian and, and, and roundings, uh, uh, but also somehow in Europe, you will see is the Belvest company. I believe many of you or everyone knows, no, still remembers Belvest. It, it's a famous company that produced shoes. So many it has flexible design workflows and so on. So we are very close to them and we apply, initially apply our new uh, invented uh, technologies uh, onto them. And I will show you what is the level. So all, all projects that I'm talking today, also about quality inspection and robotization, they are already implemented uh, at Belvest. The fourth direction my company is working on, where I always like to repeat, no, I hope we can collaborate with some of you. Then after, after the presentation, you will contact me. For first is direction of factory 4.0. We develop a full set of solutions about robotization of uh, manufacturing. It's very deep. You will see on the on videos and, and images. It is quite complicated. Uh, second direction is digital ecosystems, a B2B footwear uh, wholesale system. It's out of scope today, but it's also very interesting and challenging direction. Many people work on there, and for us, it's our main commercial product. Then we have also logistics 4.0. So again, mobile robots, uh, no, uh, IGVs, uh, and uh, uh, fleet management systems, and so on and so on. So it's the same robotics applied to logistics. And finally, AI and digital twin software. This is exactly my laboratory here in Milan, but then its team is distributed. We have people uh, from, yeah, from Belarus, from Turkey, from uh, Greece, uh, and I hope somebody will join from Ukraine soon. So it's an uh, AI R&D lab uh, that, that is based on, on, on the background that I showed you ahead with my startup company that, that uh, is a fashion automation, design automation company. Robots, yes, this is how the robots look like. Now the industrial robots, one or many robots working together on some tasks. Uh, our main direction, main most important for us in the market is uh, leather, leather goods is the first initial part of footwear, shoes production, no? which starts from analyzing uh, uh, of the leather pieces and then optimizing other operations. Also in collaborative, uh, cooperation, uh, no, co co com collaborative competition between uh, several robots together, no, for for the space uh, uh, to to almost double or for being four times more um, uh, efficient uh, than a single uh, product, uh, or a single robot or machine can be. So it's robotization of uh, different um, uh, parts of the of the manufacturing process. Uh, in the footwear industry, so shoes, as Bill West, as you've seen. And for those who, let me see how to enable audio. I need here to pass you the audio. If I could remember how, it, how, it, how to do it. Okay, I don't, I don't remember any problem. Okay, let, let's, let's see this video. This is what already works on Bill West. If you, you can believe or not believe, <laughs> Look, fully robotized department of leather cutting. Then I will comment all the all these parts of, of, of the of the operational flow. Here we have several patents uh, and uh, true innovations. Uh, since you can, as you see, you know, all this process is fully automated and it's managed by digital twins uh, of products, of, uh, of product parts, uh, of processes, and uh, the factory is uh, yeah, fully automated. So this is the, the most, um, most interesting part, then uh, where the quality control uh, then is, is, is applied. But let me add, 
make it quicker. So the scanner pass it here. The uh, the leather leather piece is uh, is fixed on a film plastic film. Then it's moved it uh, to another cells. Here it's cut. And again, everything is automated. Everything calculated by artificial intelligence, and based on digital twin uh, uh, takeover. Here we cut. No, here we do cutting operations. Here we change the tool that robot robot operates and do picking. Also, very complicated intelligent algorithms of how to pick uh, in an optimal way, how to place them and uh, sort them by by uh, category by the right categories and so on and so on. No, so this is something to to make it more real. Let's say no. Now I will explain. Uh, one of the very important parts, or the most critical part, let me say, in our industry is leather analysis. As every piece of leather is different, uh, and every piece of leather is different by shape, uh, and also they have a lot of defects, uh, some scratches, some you know uh, holes and different things we'll, we'll see later. Every kind of defect is something that's not easy to formalize what it is, what it is. Plus, some, sometimes the defects are grouped together, some other times are not. It is very, very difficult, all, almost impossible to formalize rules for traditional uh, CV you know, uh, systems uh, without AI. And second, quality inspection system that, that my team is working on, still I'm very high level, not only showing you what, is, what are the directions, is visual quality inspection of the products or the final product. Now, in the same way, we have, uh, we have digital twin, how the product has to be. I will explain in every detail now what, uh, what is inside digital twin. Uh, we have comparison of the twin and a physical sample product and a, a real product in inspection. We have specific layer, this from my side, from my part, the most interesting part of uh, our uh, of our technological pipeline is working with anomalies. So instead of um, catching only defects directly, we first uh, study the non-defect products uh, and uh, understand different anomalies which are allowed, no, which are not defects. And then at the end, but again, I will explain in more details, you will see. So this is a very important uh, part that many companies simply don't use. They jump, jump over uh, the detection and classification. And then, so that's why I have uh, uh, several issues, let me say, with their pipelines. And then finally, yeah, the, the recognition, classification, etc. We can see on the real products, different defects. Uh, and this will be second part you now of a concrete example that, that I will show you. But yet before we, we go back to the case studies, let me explain how all this uh, stuff around uh, AI works. So two companies joined forces together. One is industrial automation, another is design automation, and they develop it uh, from my point of view, of view, quite unique approach to uh, to using AI for in, for Industry 4.0 uh, tasks. First of all, yeah, we have seen that. Uh, there are few real global challenges in AI, in using AI uh, for 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 the enterprise, but for any other for any other sector. Let me say, I, I believe that most of you know would know. So let me just uh, just uh, uh, quickly um, comment how we, which were our conclusion, our proposal to solve each specific challenge of the AI training process. No. Uh, so for, for the first one is, you know, no garbage in, garbage out. It's how it sounds. It means that or the model is, uh, is, is wrong or the data is uh, shitty. And at the end, for sure, you will receive shit, no? Uh, big data, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't work for at least for serious projects. Uh, just the approach of give me more images, give me just more labels. It doesn't work. Shit in, shit out. So data is very important. Uh, as a solution, what we adapted, and you will see everywhere you know, in our projects later, uh, we, we call it smart data approach, that, that some data is really needed, it's real, but most of the data can be, can be generated. You know? So the idea is to, 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 gener to, to unite, to, to, to join together generated data, in our case, for anything that's about 3D, no, anything that is 3D, so it's it's even robotic movement in factory uh, or um, 
logistics or specific uh, qu uh, quality control systems no final product we use blender blender is an open source 3d tool again later i will i will give more details about it and so the idea is to generate you no know, the data and 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 even before uh even before data synthetic data no we we decided to uh to um, to train uh, only guns because guns again let, let, let i have more detail gun has a, is a tool you know no I, I i i here i will not teach you about the basics no of ai because in this school you already heard all all, all, all these um uh, all these concepts uh, and you are quite an, quite experts i believe anyway if so, so something is not clear then we can enter the details uh, so again generative network will learn and you can easily verify what it learns no so instead of any as in the uh, convolutional or well ju ju just just neural, neural networks that learns one way with a gun you always have a way to verify so here combining 3d data and uh, and uh, uh, learning on GAN from real data gives you a, a full control of what what your uh, model has learned. No, so then second is that uh, always related. No, Ma manual annotation is not easy; it's costly. And then training on these several uh, thousand, no, normally thousands of images manually annotated, it's quite uh, quite complicated. Uh, it, the cost in the cloud, no, uh, many companies prefer to not speak how high they are. I can give you uh, another example from 5K to 10,000 euros we burn uh, uh, in monthly uh, for, uh, for just for training. Now that is quite a lot. Uh, so instead, if instead of using so, so many, let me say junk data, but label it, no, we use only few real data, but then synthetic data, I will, uh, no, I'll give some hints about how synthetic how synthetic data can be much more efficient than just real labeled data. This requires much less resources, really, really much, much less, and efficiency is much higher. Then, from from the real no AI training, the domain adaptation is a big, it's a bad problem. No, so normally neural networks don't generalize so well. So we 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 never use work in the same domain where the original uh, network network uh, was uh, was trained on. No, we need to adapt it. And here we found fantastic uh, efficiency of the approach of cycle gun. I will also show how it, how it helps uh, to solve problem of domain adaptation. So third one is a cycle gun. And first is that at least in our sector the data is uh, never available. There's, think of uh, quality inspection systems. Now who can have so many labeled data and photos and everything? We have only few, or for example, in fashion that I showed you before, not for my startup company, we have new collections. It's only a couple of photos no, of the product. So you have very limited data. So how you can train the model to then work efficiently on the, on in different uh, tasks uh, now for AI around uh, around this, this shoe if you only have one single photo of it. No? So the approaches of one shot learning and anyway combine it with all this synthetic data at the end the final architecture that we adopted is this one, uh, the, the GAN, no? the, the, the cycle GAN, uh, transfer learning on several, several layers and uh, then somewhere in specific cases we have reinforcement learning but today I will not enter otherwise we never finish and it will be only me talking the whole day. So this, 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 this is uh, the, how, we, how we approach, how we um, recommend also other companies to solve the main challenges and uh, this uh, 3D, 3D to ML, so synthetic data generation framework that, that we created as a, an internal product uh, for now. It's not commercial, but it's fully autonomous and we use it on our, all our projects. So first of all, as I say, it no, as the company, uh, the, my original company comes from design automation. So we use this Blender. Now Blender is open source environment, which has scripting. So you can write scripts in Python very easily. Even not experienced developers can write and operate 3D models or 2D models and use all the mathematical um, 
mathematical uh, tools provided by Blender. And you can then also combine, of course, with uh, MATLAB and Simulinks. I mean, the tools uh, which are not 3D based, where, uh, where which at least we use to verify if a 3D environment is also a kind of mathematical environment. Now we, we make simulations, so all, all Python stuff, uh, Python automation is developed by, in, in the case uh, of uh, now of our company by not very experienced, no, not, not the developers of, you know, uh, uh, that level. People are mostly experienced in, in training and uh, using uh, and working with CAD, CAD systems, uh, scripting. Basically, it's automation. No, it's not real programming. It's it's automation. So much easier. But uh, you can generate so 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 much. Uh, um, how to say? Uh, so much, so big influence on the rest of the AI project that for us, the, the, this team is is the one of the, the, the most important in the company. So 3D modeling and simulation. Now uh, we have meshes, we, we can produce renders, we can generate different masks, uh, we can embed inside model any landmark, so we can mark anything because with CAD system, you know everything that is inside. No, where is specific logo? Where are the borders, edges of any products? Anything you can embed it with landmarks, and then the the, the masks. I will I will show a letter, uh, which 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 masks we generate automatically from from 3D systems. All these provides uh, incredibly efficient tool for the further training. No, so then with GAN and autoencoder. Um, well, the, the main goal is data augmentation because, of course, you need some original data, surely. Now we'll see step by step how we combine the original uh, uh, small data with, uh, with the synthetic. So on GAN and uh, in cycling GAN is use, useful to, let's say, generate new data, okay? No, so we have 3D model that generates renders, maps, and everything, all the data, then, uh, here, of course, if, 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 if we had a technical session only by only to talk about this part, it would take us a couple of hours now. But here again, as I said in the beginning, I will not uh, enter in on, the, on the code level, but only show you concepts. And then uh, this good, good hint will help you to, uh, to, to, to know what to learn, where to dig. No? So the, the cycle gun to generate data. So at the end, uh, you have a network which is able to generate data. It's not a data set, no? basically we, Bo bottom line, we replace the idea of data set with a service based on cycling gun that generates data. So you can, re you can receive anything that you need, any angle, any size, any part, any color, any combination of objects, anything. No, the data set, static data set, it doesn't exist. We don't use it. We generate data on demand with, pre with, with predefined parameters. So on request, on demand, and uh, the efficiency is, is incredible. No, you, we, we, we would never be able to gather uh, the, the real data, no, uh, and especially for on-demand, uh, for think of the scenarios such as reinforcement learning, where you, you have an algorithm which is trying to evaluate something, gives you feedback in real time. You need more data to 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 you know to re-verify how it learned something, not to to, to pay him or, or to premium. So this is this is the the the, the main concept: uh, re replace data set with data generation service. Okay, then second is augmentation and balancing. Here we used uh, variation auto, auto encoders. Uh, and the sense is that that we can, and I have a more detailed slide, but I already start here. The sense now that on the second phase of, of the pipeline is um, we can see which specific shapes or well, in our case, I know what, what are the specifics, but in general, it could be anything, which are specific features which were not well learned by the system, no? And we can ask from the GAN additional um, designs, well, ad ad additional uh, uh, images, well, no, with, with metadata. Uh, to uh, to tackle this specific problem, okay? So some here we have people who, who are who are um, some way AI uh, pipeline analysts. Uh, no, formally they are part of the QA department. Well, well, we don't have a department, honestly. No, it's what I'm saying. The QA role, no quality insurance. But in the case of AI projects, the quality insurance is not so much quality of software. It's more about data, no? And uh, these people need to to understand 
uh, even deeply know what a neural network or a set of different layers of network can learn. No, in order to have this, we develop specific tools that visually or not visually, analytically report every the efficiency of every learning up to every single uh, neuron. You can see how, how it is activating over a specific input uh, image. No, so by by studying these things, you can understand why which data is. Uh, miss it no something to add and instead of going just looking around where i can get more data more 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 images more the more more numbers no we, we generate them again no so augmentation uh, is useful for balancing and this and then you verify periodically uh, almost in real time how the system were able to um, uh, to gender generalize better with this new portion of data. And then the final second is domain adaptation, but here there will be a dedicated slide. No? So gen gen generation instead of data set, augmentation, knowing what is not well uh, generalized no? and uh, generated new, new data and integrated it. And then domain adaptation to where you need. So from synthetic data to, to real data, I will show you how it works. Well, this is probably, I already explained it. Uh, just to show, no, uh, to, to make it more clear what 3D means, no, you can generate different configurations so color, material variants, whatever, different materials. You can have several uh, viewpoints, no, anything that you need that uh, from images, it's impossible to get this. No, with 3D, you can generate it on demand, how many of every angle of anything. You can put random backgrounds, of course with the goal to, to of data augmentation or with other more intelligent goals uh, we put uh, not random well in the case you, you you set up which specific background is needed in order to learn some specific uh, design pattern no you can think of the background that, that intentionally will force a, a neural network to concentrate on specific details no it's not so easy but it's possible again you need data analyst uh, the ai pipeline data analyst uh, and they can recommend specific background to to make a neural network being concentrated on details then as i said before no annotations and uh, well that that is i don't remember what, what, what we intended model model support probably metadata i think uh interesting uh, especially for you know for this uh this course is that we use masker cnn so at the end of the presentation i will show you a few uh few hints about using masker cnn uh, its limitations and how we how we were able to overcome it no then the the, the task set uh, well going ahead visually no 3d CAD model generates rendering and it's an image it generates map and generates annotations everything is clear we uh, we use everywhere the term of uh oh sorry uh, the term of uh, why it's covering here i don't see the title uh -huh. Of a digital twin, no. Anyway, and basically, well, the, the digital twins uh, in our case are just JSONs, no. They're very, very deep uh, JSON description of every single detail. So, for example, we have three levels of of JSONs. One, 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 one of digital twins, uh, but technically they're JSONs. One is CAD export, no. So CAD system generates uh, all. Uh, physical information about the model, no? every component inside, their relationships, uh, uh, their, their characteristics, the their, their size, uh, no? of the measurements of, of anything that could be ever useful. No, it, 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 it comes with the JSON. And so you can imagine that a training pipeline can use this, inform this information, uh, not only images, no? and then it can become more, more, more intelligent. What we call perception JSON. This is even more more detailed, more complicated level, layer. This is the information that we pass to our uh, AI agent that analyze quality, product quality. So here is all the information that uh, AI will compare to. You know? So you see a real product and you know how every specific aspect of it would look like, looks like on a synthetic product and you compare it. And then we also have this, this specific training JSON. So this is the instruction that we pass to our module where the cycle gun is, uh, uh, is, um, is generating, you know, the, as I say, there's a service in, in, in instead, of, uh, instead of data set. Uh, so CAD, our CAD, CAD automation model generates um, 
uh, these uh, metadata files. Now basically everything is fully automated. There is nothing to do, to do by hand. The maps. Now what is good about 3D is that you can get the maps. You, you have you now three, at least these three maps that everybody uses, and it's easy to understand that the normal map, you now the product surface, the orientation, then we have the depth maps, depth map, you now, so you can know which element of a, of a 3D model is closer and which is uh, further, you now, and then also you need some, <laughs> some intelligent tricks to export them uh, in, in, in a way that the neural networks can understand, but well, it, it can be found. And then the third one, one is Albedo map. Here we, we it's used by, to, to, mm, to understand more the nature of, of materials, materials and colors. Uh, so how the lighting is influencing on, uh, uh, on some material color. So basically the reflection, the consumption of, uh, of, uh, mm, of light, now for us, this is also helpful to, to construct uh, the physics to, how to say, to enrich uh, our calculation, uh, calculation uh, calculations uh, uh, that, that need to, to, to identify, to analyze uh, an object that, 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 that is, where, that is um, the subject now of quality inspection procedure. Uh, and then, then the, the, this is easy. It's not not specific map, but just an approach. That, for example, we need uh, to force uh, our neural networks to learn the components. Uh, but what are the components on design level? Level is quite complicated. But on two D level, it, these are just zones. Uh, we color them, so we pass the, the colored uh, colored zones, and then it's very easy to import and to um, to make it part of the training process. Here I need, I need to resolve somehow the the title is C condition scale. Why? Sorry, just a second. I don't understand why it's covering me the the main. Hello. Full screen. No. Что-то мне надо перебросить презентацию, потому что она Закрывает у меня тайтл. Я не вижу заголовки своих слайдов, поэтому... Секундочку. Just a second. Окей. Okay. You are back. Uh, what I was talking about, no, uh, j just before, uh, but he here is, a, let me say, a scheme that, that makes it easier to understand. So the training uh, and deployment of, uh, of a service based on GAN, no? So training set, we need a bigger data set. No, we have, a, we have only small data set to be based on, but then we need a much bigger data set for our different tasks. No, uh, how to solve it, <laughs> where to buy a new data set, where, to, where uh, to, to be learned from. We use our smaller data set to feed it into a GAN system, no? which basically uh, learns no? from, from what it has. Then as a who are, who are no expert about GAN would know how, how they work. Otherwise here it's, it's complicated. But anyway, let me simplify that the, the, the sense is that to to have it generated, you know, the classes that we want we want to, to have learned from. And uh, at the end, once uh, each class is generated and we, then we can see, we can judge it, uh, then, I mean, I mean, it's done, the training is done, no? And then the, these classes become basically a condition for, for, no, for new generation uh, 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 of, of the service. In this case, it's GAN, it's a full, um, fully automated, um, interactive service to, to, to generate data. And the, uh, let me see that this is the whole pipeline. Okay, so m most of elements, maybe I already mentioned it. So we start from 3D CAD model where auto generators no, uh, uh, make the useful this synthetic, uh, synthetic data we call it smart, smart approach. Uh, no, then basically uh, we, we generate a lot of 3D pictures. No, so our generated synthetic data is big data. No, it's on the contrary. While the real data is small data, it's only few. No, and the goal will be to make domain adaptation. No, from synthetic to to real data. Then reinforcement learning helps uh, solving some specific task. We will we will touch it later. Then here is the GAN. No, useful for training. 
uh, then uh, in the case, like in some specific tasks, uh, we need to transfer uh, the model, very small model no, to, to edge uh, and then further training it with, uh, uh, with uh, again, another domain adaptation uh, or sorry, I mean, uh, another transfer learning to a specific, uh, to specific more concrete image set. No? So we have a pre-trained model uh, on this uh, on these base classes that that come from synthetic data and we're already uh, here um, transfer learned uh, now to 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 real data but at the end uh, like in fashion it always happened you know the new collection every new collection is something that is similar but different no so we created a set of uh, uh, st uh, standard styles uh, which neural networks already know very well no from every angle the sizes their positions can evaluate and me measure them etc so finally we'll pass now to quality inspection uh, but then uh, visually they are a bit different no and uh, what fashion uh, needs uh, is to easily adapt uh, well pre-trained model to a concrete new new look you no know, of of a product think of shoes you no know? especially those high heel shoes they are really the elegant high heel shoe is very simple or the same sneakers they are all the same basically <laughs> apart from uh, iconic models you know, of nike adidas and and, and etc uh, so you need uh, to pass only very specific design elements uh, and uh, this architecture is able to uh, to adapt uh, again, it's covering here. Oh my, my why? This level I will I will close. Okay, uh, I was I was talking also mentioning you know, the autoencoders uh, as an approach to uh, for data balancing. Now, so here the difference between uh, full uh, full encoder no uh, that is gone and the autoencoder uh, that that uh, you will have. Uh, Basically, products. Uh, oh, let me see what was what was the sense here to say an existing set of image output model higher higher accuracy. That, ah, okay, okay, no, 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 sure, sure. Here, the the the, the idea was to to uh, to evaluate uh, now if the the initial data set is enough uh, um, to uh, f enough to generalize no, and then uh, with 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 uh, with additional additional class specific specific generated data to to have it uh, more complete. But well, okay, I think it's the same things. Let let me pass to the concrete application. Otherwise, yeah, it's, it's too much too much theoretical. So visual quality inspection systems, no, visual quality inspection. So it's visual, it's quality quality of a product. So it means that you need to know how a product is made and inspection is the process. Okay, here traditional uh, discussion is uh, if neural networks or computer vision classics know who is a, who is a stronger and of course the answer we all know now is to make them working together because computer vision system can know, cannot generalize by themselves. They, they, they are not able to adapt to a new domain and they, they would need some specific fixed rules uh, while just uh, just neural networks, they 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 have their own limits. No, they 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 need a lot of data. They they can only understand what they have seen, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So of course, combining in a special hybrid uh, architecture and uh, neural networks and and, and uh, classic computer vision that, that gives the, the the strongest results. That that's for sure. No, but the good question is if the architecture, the backbone, no, of of um, of uh, current architecture is uh, suitable to to solve any any uh, visual uh, visual challenges or not. No, so we will always speak about image classification, detection, semantic segmentation, and specific applications. Think of no specific applications like face analysis or pose estimation. No, so not not uh, not all network architectures are good to uh, to solve all, all all these tasks and especially. The, the very specific task like those that we have no so in image classification you know the evolution was from AlexNet, google net etc etc until dense net that, that until recently was considered the high standard but now so we adapted this high resolution net i will give you some details and uh, it's probably the first real serious universal backbone architecture now for for um, 
for AI system. No, like we, we have very specific tasks. No, we need to classify, detect, classify, and uh, receive a mask and everything of defects of on leather. It is quite amorphous uh, object, uh, very, very strange uh, shape. Uh, uh, patterns are very difficult to generalize, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now we tried most different architectures and came out that this high-resolution net is, is the only one uh, universal that, uh, that 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 was able to to give us the needed quality, and it can solve all all, all these tasks uh, uh, basically in, in the same uh, standard approach. Let's see how. Okay, number one case study from our company is uh, we call it VQI Visual Quality Inspection Shoes. So uh, real products, uh, um, product inspection. No, you can you can imagine. You, you may, who, who never been in factory can imagine. Uh, trust me. No, that that still most uh, most ninety nine percent of companies uh, uh, do do control in this way. It is or randomic or every every thought you you get a new product and you and you, ver you verify it so you have to have in your head a full list of potential problems you need your eyes not to not become crazy from uh, looking at the same similar things but human vision is is is, is very complicated so basically it's a very big problem no uh, so um visual inspection uh, uh based on ai uh, is a uh, for sure, the only the only solution uh, in the automated environments, uh, but can be easily ad adapted, integrated also in not automated environments. The challenge would be uh, the challenge uh, would be how to really train. You no, know, every specific model you need to know what is a defect, what is not, what what is the level of allow it. No difference from from the original, from the ideal sample. And uh, so here, basically, uh, for us to Coming back to who we are, no applied mathematicians. Now the main challenge is not to create a specific pipeline to implement a specific task, but basically to create a system which is able to learn by itself. Now that's why all these different complicated and maybe not very clear because of time constraints. No uh, levels of uh, architecture, architectural pipeline, uh, because the the, yeah, the sense is to build a system that can can learn as much as it can from synthetic model representation, then it has only few samples, like real good quality products, you know, in a factory. So they make like one, two, five good products uh, and say, this is enough. No, this, this is the only way uh, I, I can pass you. And then you need to start already inspecting and deciding uh, which are, are good, which are bad. But what what is this bad good? No, you need to observe product from every angle, from every possible uh, dimension no, of, 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 of inspection and make conclusions yourself. So the pipeline, the architecture has to understand which are uh, those difference because visually you no know, think of a shoe it's never the same it's always folded in some way uh, i mean if the same size even the same size the same sq the same model you no know, every product coming out from a production line is a bit different visually you no know? so the system has to make all these conclusions themselves and and work in real time you no know? they have the time for training that you have uh, it's not almost real time it's it's, it's not uh, a, a laboratory test no you need to um, you, you you may have time to prepare uh, the basic training based on synthetic data because you have the model of the product okay so that's why we use synthetic data and develop it all this complicated pipeline from uh, from 3d models so we prepare no a pre-trained uh, system then we receive few physical samples only a few days before the system needs to go into production and then you receive thousand pieces uh, made a day no and you, you already need to at least try to make some conclusions where are the, the defects uh, Okay, so surely computer vision, of course, everything that it, that's possible to be to be done on the level of computer vision uh, to identify any pattern of anything. I will show in our small small video that that helps uh, easily understand which are the patterns that, that we that we see. And then it is deep learning, no, surely. So we, we in, in this specific project, uh, we already have some dozen of uh, specialized neural networks for every stitch, for every interesting operation uh, that needs to be analyzed. 
uh, we train a specific neural network. Some, some of them are very simple, some others are quite complicated and have several le levels of transfer learning from similar products, from the cate category product, from uh, uh, model specific type product, et cetera, et cetera. So he, it, it is quite complicated, but anyway, the approach bottom line is that you have um, computer vision to, to analyze what you see, try to enhance no information, to extract anything that is possible, and then AI, neural networks, and, and, and just general algorithms known clusterization, whatever it is, for classification, random forest, and whatever you, you know better than me, now which are, which are the, uh, so many uh, available algorithms, we can use them, combining all this together uh, to uh, solve specific, uh, specific tasks. But again, as I said, the main challenge is to learn, is to learn what is good, what is not, no? So at the end, uh, the analysis, the debug, uh, no, and analysis of of the back end of this system is so complicated. That there is even more complicated than 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 the than the uh, the the the, the, pipe, the pipeline itself, no, because it it's some some engineer or or it it can never be uh, fully automated. No, you need, you still need some people that, but anyway. Uh, they only make decisions because data is analyzed uh, analyzed automatically and then the, the, you see you know you see what is not working then then you you ask your team to generate specific data and to retrain uh, on the specific uh, situation so here it's very simplified that uh, in the lab how it looks like on the factory I will show a letter now in the lab uh, well I think of you now some uh, some uh, physical environment where you, you can make a photo from every angle. Then you have these digital twins, uh, no, as you say, different maps, uh, physical sample, 3D, CAD, uh, and, and different maps. Uh, and you have a real photo and you start decomposing and analyzing uh, a, a piece by piece. No? And uh, so he, here also um, the interesting challenge uh, is pixel to pixel comparison, no? but then also semantic since like here we, you see we have components so for us we it's not enough to have only pixel differences so again to solve the the problem of um, what is allowed what is what is anomaly but allowed it what is not a defect we always compare at the end but i will explain it just a bit further um on the level of uh, decision making, uh, know what uh, that every found uh, anomaly could could be or not be uh, a defect. But first of all, you need to uh, to detect it, of course, no. And then, so then we make decision making and decide this is defect, this is not defect. Let me show you this video so I can also have a, a couple of minutes to relax. You see, it it, it explains how the pipeline works for uh, for the shoe project. So here are the layers, model detection, anchor point localization, mask superimposition. This, uh, you, you will see it and it's explained it. Uh, we extract specific area and then feature comparison and decision making. Yeah, I see someone's hand raised. Изабелла, я видел поднятую руку. Хотите что-то добавить? А, да, 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 у меня были проблемы просто с Wi-Fi, меня выкинуло. А. А, я подняла руку, чтобы меня обратно перевели в организацию. А, окей. Это не ко мне, окей, хорошо. А, да, да, да. Тут у нас в чате было парочка вопросов. Я думаю, закончу, закончу эту сессию, да, тогда потом почитаю. Э -э да, да, конечно. Супер. So again, this is basically this is the main, I think, the main trick and the main specifics of our projects. Now that we have sample images but only few really few and then we have 3d model uh, that there is as i say it is an interactive service plus uh, plus uh, metadata and uh, this is the all information that you have in order to to analyze what is wrong what is what is good so some computer vision methods are simple and you, you will see sure You 
you see an anomaly. So first of all, it's of course just to see an anomaly and then to try to classify if, if we understood what it means, if it presented in the, in the, in the logic of defects classification. Some operation required human supervision now, but in, in, in our case, it is okay. Uh, some, if we can solve, you know, some high percentage of problems automatically because it's just algorithmic, you know, it can be easily formalized. It. It's one thing, but then uh, if uh, somewhere system is not sure, you know, what it means, but still we're able to identify those small areas, you can attract uh, um, attention of, of the specific operator and say, you know, so what, what it means, please, please take your decision. Here, there is the easiest and a uh, problem of not uh, fully cut uh, holes. No, it is, seems to be simple, but the standard traditional vision systems were not able to, to solve this problem. Instead, specific uh, training you non know, deep learning were, was easily helpful. This is glue, piece of glue that is going out, not between outsole and the upper. Sometimes it's going out the glue. Here is a small scratch. And again, how, how, how it makes not the material, the analysis of material different. And here I will skip it. It's over the commercial part that says how it works together. So that, that this was a, a case study for for pro, for product, and I finished it with video. But instead, the leather part, so the material anal analysis, uh, I, I I have it more more decomposed on the level of architecture. I think. Ну там было предложение почитать, что написано у нас в в чате, да? Uh, да, 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 у нас в чате задавали вопросы. А я ничего не вижу, у меня почему-то ничего не вижу. Uh, у меня сохранился один, у меня тоже выкидывало, почему-то все пропало. Uh, Федер Дзен, если вы с нами на связи, вы можете, в принципе, включить микрофон и задать этот вопрос лично. Так, прошу его включить, но во всяком случае, я тогда, чтобы не тратить время, озвучиваю сама один вопрос, который у меня сохранился. Uh, where do you get uh, data about consumer product uh, preference for product success predictions? Is it any public information sources? Yeah, do I need to answer in English or <laughs> Russian? It was a Russian person? Давайте... No, okay. Давайте я его скопирую просто еще раз в чат отправлю, потому что я... But it's okay, I can explain in English, sure. Uh, no, for, for, that, that's a, that's a, a very cool uh, question. I, I think uh, in, the, in the case of what I present today, it's not so much relevant now because we, we don't analyze commercial success of the products. But in general, I, I would have an answer, no? So in, in our case, what we build... Uh, what we build with this AI and data-driven analysis is uh, not uh, how uh, this specific product uh, uh, is matching the market trends. No? Because otherwise, is what you ask it, you would need to know which are the trends, sure, and so where to get this information. Now, in our case, we make analysis of coherency between different models. Uh, let, let me 
show my face here, no one well, well, talking. Uh, we, we analyze a difference, uh, the, the coherence between different models of a collection. You know? So what we do is a so-called uh, uh, style analysis. We don't need external data. Our data is all internal. You know? Like think you have hundreds of pieces in a, a, a one collection of a company. You no, know? And the question is how they are coherent to what companies call to our style. No, a company would say you, can you, no, can your AI uh, uh, give us a prediction which product inside this collection would probably represent better the general style of our company? No, these are the questions we can answer without external data because it's basically only internal data. We analyze every specific product there um, we create, but it's not the project now that I presented today. But anyway, we have, we have also this. We create a style vector of every specific product and then we use Latin space analysis probably at the end. I, I have time to show it also. Now that can, that, that, that can classify automatically the main, uh, the main clustered features of, of the products uh, now inside a one collection. And then you can get analysis of, for example, that some products are look like outsider. They don't, don't fit well, they are the rest of the collection. No? And so it, it's a sign to, um, to, to maybe work, work them out no? because you know, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's great that, that the whole collection is, is made of the same style. And, and then in this case, you can easily then analyze how it goes. But coming back to what exactly you ask it, no, it's not, it's not what we do. No, we don't, we don't uh, fit with the external data. Anyway, some companies, our clients, no, they use uh, the, the algorithms uh, and, uh, and they have the data. External trend data could be of two types, basically. One is a sales data. No, what, what was sold by us, uh, I mean, by company, no, by company, our collection. So you have the collection which you analyze with, with your AI and you structure all this information no, by categories, by, by, by clusters, by, by, by everything. Uh, and then you receive the feedback data, what was sold. No, and you can understand that from there with quite simple data analysis, surely, no, which were the characteristics of specific products, uh, like color combinations, no, like even specific features, like how the, the lens of, uh, or the patterns, anything. So you can identify the specific elements, which were, which, which were uh, brought more success, no, but in terms of sales, sales facts, no? Instead, if you want to think of the future, the prediction, you need the trend data, of course. No? So normally companies receive trend data or they, like you say, no? they buy it, acquire it from, from external uh, trend research companies. There are a few in our sector, there are a few of them that hmm, are sharing this data right on the level of data. You receive the images, you receive the synthetic, the, anal the anal data analysis in Excel file and CSV, now all level of uh, internal structure uh, or, of, of these products. Uh, so it's, it's features, no, like, 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 like any, anything from the, from the fashion style uh, and, and, and patterns, now colors, patterns, lines, different things. Uh, and you, 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 you receive this, this uh, input data and then you match it to your internal data. So one, one, this is one way. Uh, another way is to generate this data by, by yourself, by the company, you know. So if, if, if you're a fashion brand, of course, you're not able. You, you, have, you, you, you don't know how to do it. But high-tech companies, the retailers, for example, surely they have all this data. You know? Think of retailers like Adidas, like ASOS, like uh, whoever, Ux, uh, you know, this La Moda, these big retailers. Uh, they, have, they have the data where they know specific product or product types, product categories, their uh, alternatives, uh, competing companies. So all this data, all this information, it's, it's already for several, several years is managed uh, by, by the data, data analytics departments. And so this data can be then matched to the, uh, to the structure of new collection and you can get the, um, the candidates for uh, success and for, for possible failure. No? It is another direction where we also work on, but today I was presenting some, something different. Anyway, thank you for, for your question.
Can we continue or we'll try to read some? Вы можете, в принципе, сами читать. Если вы хотите вопросы из чата, могу их я озвучивать, как вам будет удобнее. Но если просто их очень много, то я тогда не дойду никогда до конца. Тут их куда-то два еще осталось. Do you use Japanese can say product engineering methodology in your practice? If you know, is there any technological uh, integration of machine learning methods to conceive product engineering? Ну, скажу честно, слово знакомое, но я не готов сейчас обсуждать. Sorry, in, in English, no. Yeah, uh, I want to be honest. I read that. No, I know that it exists, but uh, we never considered it, so I, I have no practical experience. И последний маленький вопрос. Uh, do you see radial basis function uh, neural networks and uh, do you see any prospects to use it? In our projects, we didn't use it. Uh, I can maybe quick, quickly here ask my, my colleague, you know, who is a technical expert, uh, and, and then, then, then tell you at the end the answer, because you know? I only know that, 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 that we use in our concrete, concrete objects, but in, in, in our case, no, we, we didn't use it. We use Mars, Mask Air CNN, and I will show you what are the, <laughs> the main problems with it and how, how to deal with it. Anyway, thank you. This one, I will pass it to my technical colleague and, and then hopefully have an, an answer by the end of presentation. Let me come Давайте на слайды. Okay, so second case study is the same, uh, the same type of uh, challenge. Uh, no, it's also visual quality inspection system, but for materials, leather. Now, leather is the most complicated material from the analysis point of view. Uh, thick. So this is, if somebody knows, not ever seen or, or not, how they, uh, they deal with leathers uh, in a traditional way. No, you have a, every piece of leather is different, is by shape, by ages, by everything, but especially by the defects. So small imperfections, some of them are so much important, so you cannot put any like this, like no product uh, part uh, on, uh, on, uh, on the area close to a specific defects. Uh, some, some other defects are very simple, so it's an, enough to isolate it, not just uh, half of, uh, of uh, one millimeter, two millimeters around it, and to not, to not use it no, for, for, for some critical zones on, on, on cutting. So every type of, of uh, it depends on, on types, uh, Uh, on on, uh, on defect type uh, and, uh, and also on the on the target use, though the poor people are preparing maps. They isolate defects, uh, uh, always thinking, no, from their head. So looking at every defect, trying to understand what 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 is the future use use of it, and isolate them by by some you know by. by some specific pens. Uh, the traditional approach is a nightmare. Of course, the performance is very, very slow and uh, mm, uh, the, the quality is also not so good, no? unless you use super experts, but they, they need to, to have very fresh uh, mind. You know? And um, many companies made um, uh, real you know, uh, tests of how Uh, how um, we, we also did it. Now, how uh, precise is this? Could be the same person for the first, second, third, etc. A batch of work. So of course, uh, the brains burn very quickly, and people, uh, even if you ask to 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 label, no, this basically for us. I mean, for AI people, it's labeling. For for them, it's not labeling. It's isolating defects. Uh, if you ask them to verify the same piece of leather, leather hide, you know, two times, uh, and then analyze with, with data approach, you know, again, so all our pipeline that I will now explain, you will see that the same person for the same leather hide uh, <laughs> cannot even repeat 50% their own experience. You no, know? so this is a cool challenge. From one side, the market, there is a full market, a full world, all and every company in the world that use leathers needs uh, uh, visual inspection systems based on AI from one side. But from another side, the problem uh, is that, yeah, after solving, let's say, first step, like what we did is a digitalization. No? So we've made a scanner that's passed over, 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 over uh, leather hide known specific table. Uh, it, it creates a very detailed, very well 
uh, seen, no, and then then it's normalized and optimized image, no highest quality image of this piece of leather. Then you have so many different layers uh, of uh, of architecture, not to to understand and decide what is a defect, what is not a defect. So we start from vision system. No, this is this is a pipeline that we have in our in in, in our company. No vision system, then pre-processing, like every piece is different type of material is different, lighting conditions are different, surface type like grains, like colors, everything is different. But in order to bring it to, to AI, not to, <laughs> to neural networks and machine, machine vision, you need to normalize it to make them, them equal, not looking equal, otherwise you cannot them analyze. Then we also need this zoning. So we, we uh, this is easy to say, but at the end it's it's another compli very complicated uh, 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 um, vertical solution. No, that trying to semantically understand the zone, the part of we, the part of animal. No, where 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 where, where they are more or less uh, formally uh, limited, because uh, for computer vision. Uh, the uh, the features, no different features of uh, how the surface look like is relatively is very different depending on the zone. So if we don't take into consideration the specific zone when we analyze the model and and even before in training, it is quite quite chaos, no. But by knowing these zones and making training intelligent zone specific, and then the whole the, the uh, not the execution of the pipeline over the uh, zone specific. We solve a lot, a lot of problems, but probably after uh, I will tell some more about it. Okay, then of course, big image, especially of highest, uh, highest uh, quality. You you need to break it down. The, uh, so decompose and prepare. This is also easy to to say. You need the small, small, small pieces. No maximum 500 to 12 uh, things like that. No, you you need the squares. Uh, uh, to, to be passed through CV and then neural network detection layers, right? But the issue is that how to cut. So you think this, this is this leather piece and you still don't know which are the defects, uh, which, what, 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 what you, you only see some pattern, but you don't know what is important, what is not on this pattern. So how to cut it, no? How to cut it to not cut in between of some important piece of information. Uh, this is also a big, big issue by itself. And here we have a, a whole um, another application basically that that uh, generates different views of the same uh, space information. So you have a, it's a over over overpassing from the left, from the right, and then at the end you need to reconstruct it. Uh, no, uh, otherwise, you know, if you cut in between of something and this something is, is important, then, then you lose an important piece of information. So this decomposition and preparation by itself is a, is quite challenging task uh, and uh, needs its own neural networks and CV uh, features, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Then we use CV detection, but we call this phase pre-detection. So what CV can surely see they, you know, with, with uh, using different uh, mathematical algorithms uh, of, of analysis of uh, images, now image processing, many things can be well seen or at least highlighted. No, you don't know, you cannot say what is it, is it defect or whatever. You only see specific pattern. No, and so we we can uh, we can uh, uh, here set, set up some rules of which patterns do are we looking at, and those uh, which are very. I say easily 100% sure. Now the CV already makes its own pre-detection. Then you have neural network detection. Here I will I will be talking more. No, here we, we in our case we use two type of neural networks. One is CNN, so based on UNet, normal UNet. Okay, images, so cats and dogs, but well train it on synthetic data. Another is masker CNN, and the two behave very differently. In, at the end, we have three type of inputs. Uh, so CV detection, uh, unit detection, and the mask CNN detection, which is already a mask. So it's not only detection, you, you have a full full region no, selected, um, but it's not enough. We even have a level of, like I mentioned before, anomaly detection. So what is an, an, an anomaly? Anomaly is uh, anything that is on the contrary. There is normal and it's allow it. 
No, defects are the things that you need to detect, classify, and those are useful for business level decisions. No, so it, this is a problem. And for every type of problem, depending on its classification, so next step, uh, something has to be done. Instead, anomaly is the, uh, the, that level of anyway patterns, no, not normal, not, not uh, something yeah, that, 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 that there is different from a normal behavior of the surface but is knowing to be a low it anomaly. No? How we solve this? Uh, since in leather, it's, it's also a very challenging thing, very interesting, and a big piece of software by itself. No, since it doesn't exist a, an ideal piece of leather. Any leather has something that has any, any, some defects, uh, no? So, but, but we need to train it. Here we have a specific gun because at the end, anomaly for anomaly, you need a gun uh, that, that, that uh, once you see there is able to generate, so predict how a product would look like. Then once you combine what is predicted by this anomaly detection gun with uh, uh, the, the CV predetection and, uh, and two, in our case, two types of uh, neural network de detection, then you can make it a less of anomalies. No, so uh, detection detects everything, also anomalies, but the gun, which knows well the anomalies, the allow it different patterns, it, it says, you know, okay, this, this you can, you cannot consider, it is known, trust me, they, they, those are not defects. No, so then when we pass to the block of uh, feature instruction and uh, and after decision making, no, all these four informations are, are, are combined, and uh, only at the end you can make a real prediction. Now, which is uh, where it's a real defect, uh, its severity, uh, accuracy, you no, know, for but then we need to measure it, of course, everything you know, you know, because in our case it's, it's mission critical. Uh, then, then you need to build a um. A rectangle, no, like like you will see, you see here, and you will see after. Uh, you you need to to isolate it from the rest of the surface of the leather, and it's not not always easy. No, it's 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 made, uh, yeah, pixel by pixel, surely, but in even the same defect like scratch, you see how how it is structured. No, it's it's very complicated uh, object. So well, uh, also this e isolation, no, decision decision making block. The isolation is a complicated issue. Well, this, this, this is the list. Vision system, the main system. Okay, and then we have pre-processing. So here you, you remove the noise from images. You highlight the uh, um, highlighting the un un unnatural variations. Okay, sure. Uh, the text is an, an, an intelligence system to detect. Okay, so zoning. We have seen. I think this is everything that we have already seen. So anomaly detection, feature instruction, and decision making block. This is just a summary. Well, okay. Uh, now, what do we receive from, from different blocks? No? So the outcomes uh, and the KPIs, how do we evaluate it? Like human, here at the left, we have human labels. It's how, how people would draw no? the, the defects uh, as they see uh, to um, uh, when they prepare labeled data. No? Okay, so again, how we train it. Of course, we train it on, on labeled data. So, so people, the same human that I showed in the beginning, they do their job. They they basically do uh, what they what they would do without us. No, what they would do for their manufacturing process. They uh, highlight and isolate these defects. Uh, uh, but we use uh, this leather as input for train our models. No, all, all different layers. It it is uh, it is label label of data. Then I will see later that there is a very big problem in it. There is human bias. Anyway, then the model of course doesn't see everything exactly like 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 they do. Also because well, first of all, not not also because uh, th this human human bias. No, every person would would make it differently, and these maps never 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 uh, the same for. Uh, even for the same worker, no, uh, uh, when they do labeling, so it's not easy. It's not, you know, like drawing a square around a, a car, no, to train an autonomous car to say here is a human, here is a car, here is you. You, you need to turn on the left or on the right. Simple rules. Uh, now here it's very different. Really, you need to draw. You need to be very precise with the with the shapes around. And humans do it very badly. This job. So model model can predict something that that we, we uh, evaluate, no, and we have some here the supervision no, of human and model prediction 
then we're, from here we extract and we have true positives, uh, false positive, false negatives. I, I will explain later. I think this matrix is something that we don't enter, otherwise the time is ticking. Uh, yeah, like I said, yeah, the, the, before this is, we use a specific type of gun. This is another hint if, if, if you want, if you would need to work with anomalies on such uh, amorphous materials, you know, like leather or any, any strange material. So Dagan is uh, something that, that, that can be used. Uh, we try to analyze here, as I said, you know, that, that real leather don't exist. So what we do, we use uh, those parts which are of, of uh, normal leathers, which are known to be not defected. Like this is a defect, we know it. And so we isolate it uh, with our pipeline and then we extract it, like cut these pieces, and all the rest it is not uh, it is not uh, not considered to be not defect. No, and we train a system system based on that. So at the end, uh, when it see it, it, it will learn, uh, not be able to regenerate and so to predict how a full material would look like. But then when it, when it sees something that is really strange, surely it will highlight it. No, so another level of uh, another level of uh, I think this is I will skip. Then the, the, the step of yeah, post-processing merging the results. No? So we have the results of CV, which uh, from, the, from the same the, 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 the defect vector, results of neural networks on defect vectors. Uh, we have the values corresponding to anomalies no? to be able to, to exclude the anomalies. Detect vector then is passed to analysis of outliners, of course, sure. No, all, all the outliners must be eliminated. Then, then further false positive elimination is applied. Well, you know. Then decisions made up. Okay, good. Here now, next step is classification. It's another type, type no, it's another task. After detection, you need to classify. So you need to understand what is the what is the class of every every defect. You see it, but what what, what is it? No. Uh, and we also do it, of course. Uh, so to class mapping. Uh, defect instance, defect instance. No, so we have like different like burning scratches, uh, pokes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We we uh, assign severity and the size. Of course, we measure it. No, this information then useful for for business level decisions. I think th th this part is is very interesting. I, I, I'm sure that you will meet it also in other tasks, uh, in other situations. No, in in our project, this was the main problem. No, that's why. Not any single company in the world ever yet ever build, including us. No, we we are still work in progress, and it's complicated. Build an AI system for uh, leather defects uh, uh, treatment. No, because you need labeled information, and and uh, not to train your your networks. Of course, with CV it's never enough. CV can only see a few things. It's only for us. It's only a tool useful to highlight what is hundred percent sure. And then we use it for feature engineering. No, but that's it. CV by itself. Uh, not not any set of rules can be based only based on on CV. There is enough for defects uh, and detection and, and classification. So it's it's always a mix of deep learning, several layers, like you've seen in our case. No, uh, the problem is again is that uh, you need labels, you need label of data, but. Uh, here there are examples. No annotator, first person, second person, third person, the same defects. Uh, one is as a, as a, the, the, these are you know, how, how they, they are really they are really made. No, so this one defect uh, here is another small defect. This is a third defect. So for one person, these are three isolated, completely different, smaller defects. Uh, for a second person, no, it is it is uh, this is one big. All, that includes everything because they're so close to each other so that for his brains, but anyway, when, when we try to analyze the rules, this rule is also correct and this rule is also correct. Everything is, it depends, no? in, in, in the business, in the real life, it always, it depends on something so that human annotator, uh, annotators are not able to handle this level of complexity. So one will pass you like that, another puts all together and third one who is also right. And so in the factory level, it won't be a problem. But for train to train any AI, it's a huge problem. No, it will only isolate this big and say this these two are not so many important. We can skip them. No. So how the hell you're gonna train your neural network, especially if it would be something really simple, like just 
you net know that we, we have it we have it based on pictures where, where the approach is the more images you pass the better the better accuracy you get now how you are able if if you if you don't have uh, a single uh no the ground true you you, you cannot cannot get it, it it's it's uh here I'm, i may i may say that we were constrained to build our own and it's another application so it's like mm, application inside the application another la la layer of uh, uh post processing of human labels no so you can imagine you need the labels the label data to train an ai system but the data is not reliable so you need an ai system that which will fix this data no so in 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 this AI system that that, that uh, uh, elaborates uh, the human uh, human input, we developed a set of rules. Now it's trying to understand the repeatability of an experience, so we can judge a specific operator, labeler operator, judge that that uh, for example a new piece uh, or an added in the data set by this specific operator is not made in its style. So we even came to to understand what is the style of labeling. Well, I, I don't, I, I don't want to to make things too much complicated or to get you scared. But anyway, mm, my message is that for business, now for business level, for real life problem, and not only competitions, uh, the AI is, is not so simple. No, uh, there is there is no other way to build uh, uh, such kind of uh, systems without AI at all, of course. But AI it doesn't mean that just you put a neural network and feed it with the images and and you have done. No. It's, it's not like that. So here there was uh, no bias and layouts created by human uh, by human experts. So at the end, what we compare, we have a true positive, false positive, and false negatives. Not true positives are uh, detect, detected instances by AI, which are overlapped. So it's good. No, we, th we say, okay, both AI and humans uh, made it uh, in a similar way. Great. But then we have also false positive that. Um, it's less than 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 a predefined threshold. So for some some somehow we we consider it a problem, no, and and uh, or a defect or anomaly. Uh, that doesn't matter. Depends on the context. But a human would not consider. But coming back to what humans do before, no, they they can consider anything. One time is like that. Another time is like that. So. Uh, we we uh, we we are constrained to build a system which is from one side learns uh, from from the human labelers, but on the other side tries to be independent and analyze uh, them. It's like I can only say it in in in, uh, uh, in 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 Russian. I don't know how it's in English. No, поправки по ветру. So you work, you know that your ground truth is, is not is probably not correct not stable and you need so many different layers which are verifying each other at the end no otherwise you build a system which only behaves like a human but again since in data set this uh mix it at the end the neural network is totally scratched it's it doesn't understand anything so it goes to uh to over detection and finally so i have a few minutes uh we use master cnn yes a lot uh, for us, is the main tool. No, those who I think everybody knows know what are, what are the advantages. Uh, in our case, it generates a full mask. No, it not only detects, but it gives us the full region. So we don't need any other uh, operations on the um, on the region generation. No, to work with contours because it's very complicated operations. The 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 other network that we have. Uh, the CNN, no, based on UNET, it can uh, it only detects, no, with a, with a, with the bounding box, no, <laughs> let's say to simplify. But how to exactly which is the region, no, of this anomaly or defect? It, it it's uh, it's a big problem that you need another another many other operations where there is a risk to make a mistake. Instead, uh, Masker CNN immediately no comes by and covers perfectly the area if it's trained uh, correctly, no. Like here, are there small comparison between uh, Masker CNN and uh, and, uh, and, the, and the CNN. So on the classification, it is able to solve multi multiply defect classes, but not other uh, not other issues. And the detection, it can add uh, uh, location information, and in segmentation, we have precise location. Perfect. Instead, in Masker CNN, we have multiply detect classes. We have precise location all in one solution: polygonal mask and bounding box and pixel mask. Uh, you know, we have everything like that, and it's it's very precise and uh, it solve 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 the issue. 
uh, and uh, here there are some recommendations now where to use and where, where to not use mask or CNN uh, and then CNN. But at the end, uh, I repeat, in our case, after some, some tests, uh, we decided to keep them both. No? So I, I don't know if, uh, to how many, uh, if it can be applied no, to all uh, projects. Surely to industrial complicated projects, is, it is better to, to, how to, say, to, to overload, to make a system more complex, but never to, to miss an opportunity. Uh, so so we, we, we use them both and compare the results. Uh, so, no, for, but anyway, maskers and then for us uh, work it greatly. It, it, it were able to understand objectiveness and pixels, and uh, we can even transfer learn from from the initial unit to masker CNN. Uh, well, that's it. No, about pixels. I think this 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 is the main the last my my conclusion with a high position sensitivity. And by the way, we didn't didn't have chance not to speak about it. But you try to 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 Google. Uh, and uh, what, what, what is about high position sensitivity? No, um, it is uh, also related to, to the backbone of the architecture. Uh, and uh, so, my final recommendation is that yeah, the the the, the masker CNN uh, based on uh, on this new uh, backbone architecture of high resolution, uh, it can be can can be a great solution. But you you, you will have <laughs> to play with it quite quite a lot. That's it. I really don't not don't uh, don't want to. I have. I think I have. Uh, yeah. After this final slide, I have some other extra slides, but probably today is too much. I overloaded with the information. What I wanted to say, anyway, is not not exactly like give you a specific hint on some technical approach because you know, first of all, our project is uh, is uh, industrial and uh, is uh, intellectual property and so on and so on. I wanted just to show you the complexity and so how nice uh, is uh, you know, the opportunity, how many things we can do uh, in, by intel intelligently uh, mixing together a computer vision, uh, deep, uh, deep learning, and especially those, those intelligent and complicated parts of the deep learning, which are GANs and uh, uh, variational encoders, and specifically the synthetic data. No, just not everywhere data is available. And anyway, where even where data is available, there are some arguments to use uh, synthetic data and go more directly to um, solving problems and uh, in generalization by feeding into into system uh, only those portions of data which which will help you generalize uh, over specific uh, specific issues so you need uh, you no know, you, you can debug let's say debug you no know, the ai architectures and i know only few uh, few companies that that, re that really work and so deeply in 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 this lay in 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 in, uh, you know, in 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 this direction but we had to do it because industrial applications otherwise no we, we would never been reliable, and I want to invite you to contact me. You know, to those who are interested to to at least discuss, you know, if we can uh, work together to resolve these these type of problems. Uh, probably then we can talk to organizers. You know how my company Icol Group can make kind of uh, partnership in some some direction, but also um, to people you can contact me directly. Andre Gold, you can find me on LinkedIn. No, I uh, hear there is my my uh, email is not presented. That, that that's good. I will write it in the chat, and uh, and the company you will find it, you no know, group I call com or on LinkedIn or uh, with my social networks. Cool. I thank you so much. Let me write you. Andre, thank you.